Daniel Edmondson here with another tip of the week. Today's tip is probably one of the best tips I'll ever give you. And what it is, it's about how to get become better as an artist. I mean, we take classes and all that, and that's all well and good. But this is something a little different. So what you do is, first you use those as inspiration, of course, all those pictures that you cut out and posters and whatnot. But... I'm going to show you a little technique today that will really help you take your paintings to a completely new level from where they've been before. And this particular exercise is not for the faint of heart because it can be a little discouraging at times. But on the other hand, it will show you what you need to do to get your paintings where they need to go. Okay, on the left here, what you see here, this is one of my paintings, right? And then this here is a good friend Rembrandt. What a wonderful painting that is, too. Look at the emotion in that. If you're like me, over the years, you've probably cut out pictures out of magazines and saved them and saved pictures on your computer until you've got this giant, massive storage of pictures. I've got, like, these white binders, and I must have half a dozen of them, and one of them is, like, four inches thick of different artists' artwork I like that I've cut out of magazine. And if you haven't done that, you should definitely do that because this is an excellent way to get better. So anyway, what you do, let's say that you paint a painting, and what you try to do is find a painting that you like from an old master or from a living master or anyone, you know, that you really admire their work. And quite frankly, you just put them up side by side and see how your painting stacks up. And check these things. Check the value structure. How does your value structure compare to the value structure of the painting you're looking at? How does the color what does the color look like? Well, now, in Rembrandt's case, a lot of the, the colors may have faded a little bit over the years, so that's a little trickier to do for something a painting this old. But if you had a contemporary master, you could certainly do that. Color, value, how does the edge work of my painting compare to the edge work of this other painting, right? Paint application, how does my paint application compare to his paint application? Do you start to see how if you dissect your painting based on a painting that you really like either from an old master or from a living master how that would really help you get down to the bottom of what you're trying to do. And you would want to look in these terms. Look in terms of color, value, edges, paint application. You see what I'm saying? Because those are the things you have control of. You don't necessarily have control of moodiness. Right, because that doesn't come down to those concrete terms of that you actually physically paint with. Okay, those are color, value, drawing, edges, paint application, and you know, composition, that kind of thing. And you just sit there and you compare, you know, blow them up and compare eyeball to eyeball. And you would do this if you had really nice high resolution images, which I don't, but just food for thought. Try that out, see what you think. I bet you'd be surprised at how your work does stack up against the old masters, and it's fun to try it. I'm going to continue on with another little short video in a minute here on this.